Merry Meet. I'm Colleen Criswell from the study group for Spiritual Enlightenment. A while back I was asked by someone the following. As a person who is still in the broom closet and whose friends and family have no idea I'm no longer affiliated with Christianity, I need some guidance as how to handle invitations from Christian friends to weddings, church events, etc. Well, when it comes to being in the broom closet, things don't really have to change at all that much. You aren't going to be struck by lightning or start to melt by entering into a church. Things will simply be the same, but a little different. Just because you aren't a Christian or hold the same belief system as your loved ones, it does not mean you can no longer celebrate with them. In the email I got, she sent along some questions. Do you attend a church event such as a meal? If I am invited, yes, I do. They eat the same things we eat. There is nothing wrong with attending a church meal. I love going to the occasional pancake supper or fish fry or ice cream social. Some of my favorite memories were of the potlucks or covered dish events at the churches my dad was a minister at. You aren't being asked to convert to their religious beliefs to eat the food. What do you do during prayers? I bow my head and am respectful of those around me. I say my own prayer in my head and thank my personal deities. I don't roll my eyes or look at my phone. This is their custom and those around me are doing their thing and I am respectful of that. I keep in mind if I want respect from others, I should show them respect as well. What do you do during the singing of hymns, especially if it's ones you know? If I'm in the mood, I will sing along. If I'm not in the mood to sing, I enjoy the music. Music is magical. And if you've taken a listen to some of the songs in the music hall, I've reworked a few old hymns with my own words. Sometimes I substitute the words in my head, but I have no issue with people who want to sing hymns. A lot of them have meaning to me either way they are sung. How do you handle attending funerals of Christian friends or relatives? I go, I mourn, I remember the loved one in my way. The funeral is for the living, not the dead, but the dead may want to have special things said or played, and even though it may not suit my tastes, it's not my choice. When I die, I hope that people of all paths who loved me attend my service and get closure. They may not understand why I had specific readings done or music played, but that's because the service is about me, not them. During the service, I will be respectful. I will listen to what the person who is talking is saying. I was actually at a service for the mother of a friend of my parents a few weeks ago. She was 97 when she passed. The minister was all fire and brimstone, and I did laugh with my mother after that. Had we brought a flask and took a sip every time the minister said carnal sin, I probably wouldn't be able to drive home. During the lecture, I read the bulletin. I looked at the flowers. I sent energy to the daughter and family of the woman who passed. I sent energy to the spirit and asked for Hecate to guide her through the underworld. I did my own thing in my head and tried not to laugh out loud when the minister discussed the carnal sins of a 97-year-old woman. This is the type of service she wanted, so her daughter followed what her mother had wanted. Who am I to begrudge that? Not only Christian events, but do you attend events, etc., of other faiths because of friends or family, and how do you handle it? If I am invited, yes, I will go. I am always happy to support my friends and family in their faith. I am always happy to celebrate with them. How do I handle it? Well, just like you would expect them to handle if they attended something you, of your faith. You expect them to be respectful, to be open, to follow along and be themselves and allow you to be yourself. You treat others as you wish to be treated. You smile, you nod, you allow them their faith, their ceremony. You also see what threads you can connect. 
One of my favorite things to do when I go to a church service is to feel the energy around me, the happy feeling of community they share. I feel good in the knowledge that they care about me to want me to be included in their special day, in their sacred space. I'm being allowed into their protective circle and witnessing a ritual performed. I may find I learned something. I also listen to the words. I look for those commonalities. I look for the symbolism that is there. I look to understand what it is they believe and how it may be similar to my own beliefs. Then I might look at how it is different, but when you look at the similarities first, the differences usually aren't that important. I look around the place of worship. I look at the color of the stained glass windows, and I consider the correspondences of colors to the image it is supposed to represent. I consider the meaning behind the artist's works. I look at the carvings on the altar and the images used to define their faith, and I consider the symbolic meanings of what that and what it means to me, and try to understand the connection that the people around me have to that image when they look at it. I consider the outline of my rituals and can follow along with the idea of theirs. Communions is just cakes and ale, sharing the sign of peace is sending out positive energy to those in need. We have the same ideas, we just call them different things. So yes, you may not have the same religious beliefs, but you may find a commonality that will help you understand your loved ones better. And maybe have an easier time explaining things to them if you choose to venture out of your broom closet and let them know about your spiritual beliefs. When you can relate your experiences to theirs, when you can wor use words that they understand, then they can understand you and your beliefs. And then it's not as scary to them because it is really similar. We can still enjoy other people's religious beliefs. We don't have to follow that belief system ourselves to still respect the fact that they want to share it with us. Simply do what you feel is comfortable with. Remember, just because you're attending your cousin's Catholic wedding doesn't mean you're turning into a Catholic. You're simply sharing their day with them. I do hope that you found this helpful to you. If you have a question, please feel free to contact me at studygroupforspiritualite at gmail.com.